Hi, welcome to February's Her Story. Uh, I'm Karen Bartlett, I coordinate uh, these presentations. Uh, thanks to Debbie for last month's, it was very inspiring and uh, really got to know um, parts of Debbie's life that I hadn't heard before. Um, so today we're going to be hearing from Helen Hall. I'm very excited to hear how her journey into faith in Jesus came about. Next month, from the 1st of March, we will be hearing from Lori Sanger, who um, was Lori Davis. So we're looking forward to that as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of snow in my garden, so I thought I'd make an effort to come outside and give you a little bit of a different uh, perspective. Uh, I know that we're all getting bored of so much stuff online um, but I hope you're all keeping safe and please contact Riverside Church or me if you need prayer. Be assured that I pray for you every day. By that I mean her story ladies. I pray for you every day and that your prayers will be answered and um, I love you lots and I hope you enjoy this presentation and I will see you next month. Bye. God bless. Hi Riverside family, I'm Helen and I've been asked to share my faith journey with you. And if you don't know me yet, I've been part of the Riverside family for just over four years. I'm married to Pete and we're both part of the worship team. We have two children, James is 21, and he's studying to be a chemical engineer and Chloe is 18 and she's hoping to go to uni next year to study geography. When I think about my faith journey there is a distinct thread running through and that is the power of relationship, connection and community. Jesus has a countercultural view of community of serving and showing love to one another. He created community all around him. And my journey has been one of learning to be authentic in relationships, to create belonging. I love that God calls us to belong as his children, even though he fully knows us. He is abounding in grace and love. And that's also what I found at Riverside. I read this morning in John 13, verse 34. Let us, let me give you a new command. Love one another in the same way I loved you. You love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for one another. And that is a wonderful picture of what we aim for and what we are as, as a body of people in Riverside. So let's start at the beginning. I grew up in the black country in a place called Rowley Regis and I'm from quite a large family with two older brothers and a younger sister. I'm very much a middle child able to adapt to others, often a mediator, but sometimes feeling as if I have to shout to be heard. We were part of a small traditional church and as a ch child I performed in something called anniversaries. I don't know if you know what they are. They were yearly children's performances and I loved them. I don't know whether these were a black country phenomenon or if other churches had these. We also had prizes, competitions, Sunday school trips and parties, all with a group of people who were closer than friends, like a family. We even called all the adults auntie and uncle. I think some of them even were, but I'm not quite sure. We were, and we are, a close family. And one thing I really treasured was that my parents would open up their home to my friends that I brought home. Church was part of my childhood, and looking back, what I really valued was the community and the people. Church was home with people who cared about me. And as a young teenager, I found that I had the, the ability to adapt and change who I was to fit in with different groups. 
And at that time, my main aim in life was to fit in and to be popular with friends. Faith was part of my upbringing. And I can't recall a time when I didn't pray as a young person. But my fitting in meant that I didn't always make the best choices in life. At the age of 17, I was really interested in music. I played in a band at church, played the keyboard, clarinet. And one evening I was playing at church and a missionary visited and he asked me if I'd like to travel around Europe playing music in the streets. I had been saving up my earnings um, from, from a Saturday job for driving lessons, but this I would like more fun. So I said yes. The trip involved traveling around in a bus with, with Jesus loves you emblazoned on the side. And I was in the back of the bus being thrown around and judging by how many people beat their horns at us. The driving didn't always match up to the testament written on the side of the bus. And during that time, during the trip, we sang, we danced, we actually promenaded along the street with many of the young people that we met. We were stopped by the police on many occasions. We attended festivals, we went to Gypsy Roman churches. It was a lot of fun. And it was all the more memorable for a Bristolian lad I met who made up songs on his guitar for me. And I have to admit that when I got home, I thought that was a lovely holiday romance. And I was surprised when he turned up my, at my home that weekend. And that was over 30 years ago, and we're still together. So that trip was instrumental in my decision to work with children. And after I trained to be a primary school teacher, I started teaching in Gornal in Dudley for the next seven years. We lived in the horse fair in Kidderminster as Pete was working as a youth and community worker for the Salvation Army. Living and working in community with, in a community with so much need was eye-opening, life-changing, and we did see some lives transformed. At work, I had the opportunity to lead inclusion making sure all the children with educational needs, special educational needs were supported. And I did, I really loved it. However, at this time, my faith kind of stagnated and this carried on for many years. Years went by and even after we moved to Beaudley, I started to go to, and I started to go to the Baptist church. I really didn't have that close relationship with God that I'd had as a young person. We spent many years not going to church and I'm kind of ashamed to say that I would describe myself as agnostic to people. And it sounds pretty arrogant to say now, but I, I thought I didn't need God anymore and that I'd grown out of having a faith. At this time, I was now a head teacher and I placed my worth or a lot of it on achievement and status. I worked long, long hours, rarely took time off, read books on how to be successful and achieve. The more success I had, the more I strived to gain. I even remember getting up at five o'clock so I could fit more things in. My career had become number one in my life and it was paying off. The school had two outstanding offsets, it was oversubscribed, I had a brilliant team of teachers, but God was about to step into my life to show me that I needed to submit to him and that was heading down the wrong path. So in 2016, I found myself at the start of a new term feeling there must be more to life than this. It was a thought that kept coming back to me. I'd known people close to me at that time who'd been very ill. I'd had a health scare myself. I thought, I'm really tired of life. Life seems so meaningless. All the striving and chasing after success. 
was leaving me feeling unfulfilled. Looking back, it seems clear to me now why this was, because Jesus tells us this truth in John 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, and I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. And I was looking for life in all the wrong places. And at this time, my family weren't really seeing much of me. It's really embarrassing to say I'd got hardly any friends, I'd got hardly any interests. I was just, it was just all work. So I decided wrongly that, I don't know why, but this must be a time that I needed more challenge in life. So I rushed into taking on a new school leader role. I really struggled in this new role. I'd made a mistake. The school didn't really suit me. I desperately missed my old staff team. I felt isolated, lonely. I was constantly firefighting. I was tired. I didn't have a team I knew. I floundered and I failed. And I started su suffering for the first time from depression and anxiety. And it was so hard for Pete because if anyone has experienced this, living with someone who's experiencing depression as an illness is really tough. It clouded my thinking and I felt very low. I'm very sorry to say that my thinking was distorted and it seemed as if my whole reason for being had disappeared. I kept going through gritted teeth, but it was as if my body said, if you aren't going to listen, I'm going to show you. So one morning I woke up and I couldn't move my legs. It was frightening. It was a reaction to stress and I knew that I couldn't go on in the same way. In all the years before this, Heather, Heather Davis, who you might know, had often asked me to go to Riverside with her. And I'd either gone along, but not really engaged, or I'd made an excuse. And I'm sorry, Heather, because I felt like I was a really rubbish friend at this time. That Christmas 2016 was our worst ever family illness, bereavement, depression, hopelessness, meant that as a family, we were at a really low point. God put the thought into both our hearts to go to Riverside, where Heather had invited us in the new year for a new start. In all honesty, it took courage to go, but I also thought, what have I got to lose? So totally broken and in tears after Nigel had spoken, we went forward to ask for forgiveness, to put our thumbprints on the cross. And that was the turning point for rebuilding our lives. We took a step towards a new life, to strengthening our marriage, to offering our lives to God, and gradually his grace had started to make all things new. Heather and Gwyn were a huge support and they and other friends spoke God's word of restoration, truth and love into our lives. We made the determined step to start every day reading God's word and seeking his truth. I started to have the faith to believe that God sees our heart and Importantly, he values us for who we are. I realised the simple truth that even if we are not successful in the world's eyes, we are still chosen, loved and precious to God. I love teaching and I have the greatest respect for teachers. But as we and as I sought God, I felt that God was calling me to something new. So in, after a couple of months, after we'd made that commitment, I found the courage to give up my job 
and to trust God to provide for the future. I spent the next year studying at university. It was so rewarding to be a learner again and to get involved in student research. And um, during that time, Heather gave me a key verse and it is from Psalm 51 verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. It was a time of restoration and gradually God healed me of depression. He restored my joy, my love of life and helped me to celebrate God's gifts. And part of that rest restoration was learning that it is okay not to be okay sometimes. And that we need to be real, be honest, and to show ourselves compassion. And I do believe that Jesus doesn't want us to follow the world's way of pushing ourselves without times of rest. I believe that he wants us to take time to be still and know that he is God. Jesus rested. He took naps. He went to parties. He enjoyed the company of others. For many months, I was a full-time student and mom, and I got really good at making home-cooked meals that didn't cost the earth. I learned to cherish life. Later on that year, I was thinking about where God may take me. Maybe a job at uni or back to teaching. I just wasn't sure. And then I heard about, through a friend's Facebook, about a Christian charity called Save Families. Safe families exist to equip the church to bring hope and belonging to families in need. It is about bringing people into communities like Riverside all over the UK. It is an incredible organisation. And whilst it is hard work, you see so, and you do see so much suffering, it is such a privilege to work for safe families and to fight injustice. We often work with families who've been through so much trauma, abuse, suffering, but God does great things through his church and through his people. People bring the presence of God to these families and it is so powerful. God has used my experience working with children with special needs. He's used my battle with anxiety and depression to enable me to understand and to journey with families. God is our ever-present strength and courage. God fully knows us and fully loves us. The work of Safe Families is about belonging, which is about being fully known and fully loved. There is a well-known priest who said, you say you love the poor, then tell me what are their names? Do you know? This is a challenge to us all. So, I've come full circle and back to belonging and connection. I want to serve God by showing love to others. And sometimes this means knowing their suffering. And as a family, it hasn't been all plain sailing in the last few years, but I believe that as we submit to God, he will guide our steps. God taught me that we need each other that none of us can succeed in our strength, in our own strength, and that our weakness is his strength. Western society is all about individualism. I'll say that again, individualism. And it is such a lie. We need each other. In 2 Corinthians verse 12, the Bible says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. Life in my own strength was nothing to the life that he could show me. And although we may know suffering and hardship, God is with us and he will never forsake us. He has known suffering and he suffers with us and he longs for us to be in communion with him. Thank you, Riverside. While I'm here, 
we are praying for safe families to come to Worcestershire. And if you want to pray with me, please let me know. I'd love to sign you up as a prayer partner. Um, thank you. God bless you all.